Yeah, hello again. Hello again. Uh, this will be a, this will be certainly a very short talk. And um, and um, basically, what I what I can say is, over the last two days, we got a very very positive and very constructive feedback from you about the IoT sensor that we have built. And some of you even remembered that there was last year talk where the idea was presented of how this could be conceptually be done. And and also we we got a lot of very technical question. And I would just like to take the next couple of minutes to answer the most asked questions for you. So to give you better understanding of how we did certain things and if you would like to do it on your own of uh, how you can do it. So it will be a very quick short, a uh, very quick talk and it will be a little bit technical but I think that is okay for a network monitoring conference. So you have all seen this, um, you've all seen the screen outside at the booth and there were a couple of questions, for example, how does it work in general? And in general, what it does is, um, uh, this, this IoT sensor, what it does is, is uh, it has a sleep mode and then it wakes up. And when it um, wakes up, then it connects to the Wi-Fi network, which is pre-configured. And then it does the measurements and then sends the data over to Zebix and then goes to sleep again. And that is why we say that we can cover about one year in mobile operation using the internal rechargeable batteries. And then there was a question whether you throw it away after one year and that is not the idea. The idea is that you just simply recharge the battery, of course. Um, so that is. Another question was um, of, uh, for example, how in general can we solve with IoT devices um, the problem of configuration? That was also a question that was raised from the community here. I don't remember the name of the guy, but it was a very clever question. And it was asking of how do you manage the configuration? Well, and um, we have two configuration modes. Uh, we decided to go for two configuration modes here. One is a Wi-Fi based configuration mode. Some of you tried it outside with a mobile phone. Uh, you just press a button, wait until it flashes in a certain color, in this case red, and then it spawns its own access point and then you can use your mobile or your tablet or your PC, whatever you would like to. And then you can configure the sensor using a standard web browser. And um, the professional way to do it is that we have over-the-air configuration. So the sensor contacts the configuration management server and pulls the configuration. And that is the way you would do it if you have more than one device, of course. Yeah? And it was uh, inspired by the question that we were raised last year on the talk. I think that's more or less done. Over-the-air update for firmware, for configuration, I covered this one. And then I think these were the most asked questions. Yeah? These were the most asked questions. Is it based on a Raspberry Pi? And does it work with Linux? And how did you install the Zebix agents there? And question number one, question number two, and question number three. Yeah, I can say the answer is very simple. No, no, and no. Yeah. So that is a very, <laughs> it's not based on a Raspberry Pi, it does not under Linux, and is, there's no Zebix agent installed. Uh, and I think even the no-go based Zebix agent won't run in this environment. And the reason is very simple, it's because it's using a microcontroller. And um, if you don't, if you never have heard about a microcontroller before, it's just special chips doing special things, but there are no full-featured computers. So these are microcontrollers. And I covered this in the, in the talk uh, from the last year in detail, and there's also a GitHub repository, so if you would uh, like to give yourself a try, then can do it. This one is based on um, the so-called ESP32, which is a well-known IoT chip from the company Expressive. And what uh, Expressive does, I'm sorry that it's so hard to read on the, on the right-hand side. I will read it for you because you won't be able to read it over there. It's saying you have to use a programming language C or C++. You use the native IDF. Uh, IDF is the IoT development framework from the company Expressive. And on top of this, uh, we are running free RTOS, the free real-time operating system, which is... Um, also uh, used and sponsored by Amazon because Amazon uses the free autos for their own IoT device series as well. And um, basically, this is the software and hardware foundation of uh, what we use to. And there's a lot of stuff in the internet available. 
And another question that came up very, uh, very often also in the talk last year was, how does the network communication actually work? So how does the sensor work with a network? And uh, this, I think this slide should explain very neatly of how it works. Basically, we have uh, two scenarios. We have a scenario where the sensor works directly with the Zabbix server uh, or with the Zabbix proxy. So the first, the first one here is showing of how it works with the Zabbix proxy. And the important part here is that there is no polling involved. This was also a question that was raised so often. Uh, what we do is we're using the native, uh, the native Zabbix protocol on one hand, but the sensor actually sends data. And the sending of data is very similar to if you use Zabbix Sender or if you're using Zabbix Agent Active. So that is a pretty much the same thing. And what we have done is we just implemented the networking protocol. It's not that we implemented the Zabbix Sender, it's we used the network protocol. That's all what we did. And so we can actively send data over. And this gives us um, a couple of advantages. So for example, the advantage is that we only have outgoing uh, network connections on the, on the sensor side. So if you take it at home and we we'll put it in your kitchen in the living room, there's no special firewall configuration because it's an outgoing network connection. And the other one, and the other reason why we use this approach was um, because we decide when we are going to send data, we can decide when we would like to be connected with a Wi-Fi network, and this means in turn that we save a lot of power. Yeah? Otherwise, if we would wait for the Zebic server to connect to this device, then we need to be always online, and that is, of course, nothing that will work for one year if you lose the battery approach. And, um, and I mean, you can have a USB power supply connected all day, then there's no issue, but if you, if you do the power save mode, then you would like to go for this active mode here. And the other option we have here is to go um, for the proxy, and, and this way you can have TLS encryption on top of it. Yeah, there was, there was um, this one, this question then came up was, um, how does the configuration look in Zebex? So we covered the configuration, uh, the technology, the idea, how it's being implemented, and how the network communication looks like. So the last piece I will ask quite often was, um, how does the configuration look in Zebex? And the answer is quite uh, simple. It looks like this. Um, this is, uh, these are two slides. I will go here. You can look at it a little bit better. We have, uh, these are all metrics uh, delivered by the sensor. And what we have here is this device info part. So you see we have a couple of information about the device itself. Then we have the fails part, which is uh, if everything is, if something is going wrong, you see it here in the fails area. The sensor fails, connection fails, uh, cannot reach Zebix fails, Wi-Fi fails. Then um, sensor availability stuff is on the top here, like do you have connected an external temperature sensor or not? And then you find here the actual sensor data. And uh, you see this uh, a screenshot from, from, from a Zabbix monitoring interface. So basically, these are the keys that you use. So if you would like to get the temperature, you create a key with um, somewhere here, temperature. Yeah? That's all what you need to do. And then you get all of these values. And um, then we have some stats and configuration page. Why? So you can monitor um, yourself in which state your sensor are. Is it properly configured, etc.? What is the over-the-air update state, for example? Was there a request? You see here, no request sent, and so on. So you get all this stuff here. And these are valuable performance metrics for the connection time to the Wi-Fi network and to the uh, actual Zebic server. Um, to tell you the truth, uh, we have a version of this uh, Zabbix uh, sensor running where we disable the, uh, the sensor stuff and keep only the Wi-Fi stuff to monitor Wi-Fi sensors. Okay, and um, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah.